Welcome to the Wild Type Podcast. I'm Lissa Lizards. I'm Nipsa the Chameleon. And, and we're, we're your reptile, reptile girlies. girlies. So something that happened to me while getting ready for this podcast is I put my mascara on and then I sneezed. That's literally the worst girl right moment ever. after I put my mascara on. <sighs> okay, but did it get only on the top lid or did it get underneath too? On the bottom. But I could feel the sneeze, so I tried to like yeah. tilt my head yeah. up, you know? You you can try with all your might and it, it just And I'm like a not. forceful sneezer. Like there's yes. people who have the cute little itchy sneeze. No, no I'm, I'm intense. Like, no, I'm intense. No, I'm, I'm like a yeah, let yeah. it out sneeze. And so no matter how hard I try to like yeah. make it dainty, it just never happens. No, and so I'm, I literally put my mascara on. I was like, wow, looks great. And then just Well, like, meanwhile, I took like a two hour nap today because I was exhausted. And we, we so love that. I had to wake up and retouch my makeup because all of my eyeliner got done oh, here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know the feeling. And so then I your poor pillowcase is like totally mm-hmm. ruined. Oh, no, no, no. This was a couch nap. Oh, you're good then. And couch naps, in my personal experience, are the preferred ca- like nap method. Yeah. Like if I really want, like I will sleep so much better on a couch nap than I will in my bed. I agree with that. But I also took a nap today and it was a bed nap. Mm. Yeah. I just wanted to get all, all snuggly. Sometimes you just got to get all snuggly. But it was I like just... a 30 minute nap. It was a quick like... Right. See, no, I I am a couch girl. Like, I want to pass out hard on the couch. This was a post, like, sunny pool day. Yes. You know, where you shower and you're just like... Yep. 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 No, I'm here for it. (laughs) I'm here for it. Well, anyways, not that you asked, but that's what happened before the podcast. Fun little little getting ready moments, you know? Every girl typically experiences. Been there, done that. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Well, today we have a really interesting topic that I've, like, been wanting to talk about for a while. Yes. This has been one that we have pushed out mm -hmm. a couple of weeks because something else like comes up or and also it requires a little bit of research. Yeah. So homework. Yeah. So we're I'm sure that a lot of you guys are aware, but in the reptile keeping hobby, there are, you know, what are called morphs, which is a type of genetic. It is something that is, you know, it's how they look based Mm -hmm. on their genes and things like that and different traits that happen in reptile breeding. Yep. And when that happens, there are sometimes some side effects or symptoms or syndromes that come out of those breeding projects Mm -hmm. that are very unethical and detrimental to the animal. Because something to emphasize in this is that these are mutations, Yes. right? These are not naturally occurring Mm -hmm. things in the wild. And so we get these different colors, these Mm -hmm. different morphs as mutations, which some of them are just colors, right? right? Which is great, wonderful week to enjoy this really cool looking Mm -hmm. animal. But with every mutation, like the mutation by definition is something that is not normal or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, red hair is a mutation, right? right? Like that's just part of how it goes. And so with these mutations, sometimes come these cons. Downsides. Yeah. So, and these are the kind of things that, you know, if you're looking to get a new reptile or you're looking for a breeder, things like that, these are the kind of morphs that you want to just keep an eye out so that you, A, don't end up buying one unknowingly Mm -hmm. that's going to have problems. And then also B, in my opinion, you don't always want to work with a breeder who might... There's just the the ethics that that go into it of Mm -hmm. if someone's intentionally going out of way to breed this mutation, fully knowing the health implications and risks that are associated with that, Mm -hmm. then you're like, okay, is that a good reason to be breeding the morph? Some people will say yes, some people will say no. And that's a decision we all have to make Mm -hmm. for ourselves. But we want to make sure in this episode, we bring these things to light so that you Mm -hmm. guys can make educated decisions for yourself. Absolutely. But also, it's just interesting to talk about. And we just want to make sure that everybody kind of knows because there's a lot of different things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how do we want to go about this? Because I have like essentially like lists based on the type of species. Yeah, 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 yeah. So obviously like ball pythons are snakes that are very, very, very commonly bred. So I would say, and also in my opinion, ball pythons are one of the ones that have the widest variety of morphs. Yeah, mutations, right? I really want to emphasize that these are 
mutations. And when someone discovers a new morph, mm -hmm. it is a new mutation mm -hmm. of the gene. And they can usually track that specific morph yes. to the gene that it is mutated by, yes. which is pretty cool. Yes. And so there, so it's there's just so many. And so with ball pythons, I would say there's the most. So do you know the very first one that is like the number one ball python morph that is not a good one? So this is an interesting episode because she has all the notes and I'm flying blind right now because <laughs> this is so outside my comfort zone. And yeah. there have been so many times where I thought something was cool and then you're like, hey, sorry to break it to you, but like so this sorry. one's terrible. Yeah. So I think I do know the answer to this one though, mm -hmm. spider morph. Yes. Yeah. So that tells you how big, it, how popular it is if I know yes. it off the top of my head. So a spider ball python morph, the reason that it is so well known as I would say like when you talk about unethical morphs it's probably the first one that comes up I yeah mean, it's very like popular it's hard to be in the reptile community and not know that the spider ball python morph is problematic mm -hmm. and so basically the reason for that is because it is well known to cause a wobble in this in the snakes and not every single snake with the spider gene is going to have a wobble but the majority do yeah so and this is neurological yes. right yeah mm -hmm. which is where then the ethics of this come into question mm -hmm. because it's not just a color mutation right the well-being of mm -hmm. the animal being able to properly eat properly move and yes. everything else comes into question and then what's the quality of life for the animal right. should we be intentionally and then it just opens up this whole can whole of worms can of worms yeah it's yeah. a whole situation so there are actually, and I looked up a lot of these just in advance to make sure that I had them. There are quite a few because the thing is, and this is the crazy part, and I do, this is a little bit of just like a disclaimer. Neither of us are breeders. Yeah. Neither of us know the in-depth details. Neither of us what, even keep ball pythons. No. Yeah. So like, but just in general, when it comes to like these genetic morphs, like mutations, like all of that, we are not people that are very well versed no, we're on coming the genetics. from like the keeper hobbyist yes. perspective yes yep. so just fyi if we get anything wrong please let us know in the comments yeah if we're missing any of the morphs that are you know really concerning let us know in the comments as always that's I just the beauty of the that. podcast though so we open up the discussion yes. right yeah yeah and mm -hmm. whatever whatever we're missing fill us in mm -hmm. so basically it's super interesting because the spider morph has the way it kind of goes is they'll breed it into other things and then give it a new name mm -hmm. based on the combination of it. Yeah, which so, is true of, of a lot of the ball python yes, morphs. Yeah. Yes. So, so you're like, where did highway come from? And they're like, oh, it's a this with that and a that. And it, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. But sometimes those names can kind of hide some of the morphs that could be a problem, mm, yes, which is very interesting. True. So rebranding it. Yeah. Exactly. And so the spider ball python morph is the one that has the wobble and is most well known to have a wobble but what i found is that that also includes anything that has spinner or b in the title mm -hmm. i actually did know that I knew one. the b yeah. one but i didn't know about spinner so those are two that also contain the spider morph but it's just not it doesn't say spider so you might not know mm -hmm. so that's important to know yeah totally but then there's also several others so there's the champagne morph a super sable which i actually hadn't seen before so i don't know what that one is and then there's also Powerball, or I think another name for it is Super Spot Nose. Hmm. So there's just like and all, all of those these. have spider. All of the not necessarily spider, but they all have some form of a wobble. Oh, okay. Or okay. have the potential. I feel to like have some champagnes kind of a are very a very popular. I know. I and actually I didn't had, know that those had. And you know, some of these morphs might have lower percentages of how often the wobble shows up. Like we don't know sure, those sure, details. Sure, sure. Yeah. Spider is the one that it's like most common. Yeah. Like, it, it's really hard to find a spider, spider ball python that doesn't have the wobble. So, and I guess I want to get into like the wobble of it is like, what does that look like? Because like you said, it is a neurological disorder. Yeah. So basically what that means is they don't always have the, like neurologically, the ability to balance themselves or use the, their equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So their balance is off. And so they don't always know which way is up. Which is like yeah, a crazy they end up thought. kind of like flipping, yeah, they kind of and twisting yeah. around, yeah, mm -hmm. and it makes it really, really hard for them to eat their food, yep. find their food. So it's really hard for some of these animals. And again, like the severity of the wobble can vary. Yeah, there are definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, some extreme cases yes. though, right, where it's basically a disabled animal right yeah. and you're having to like really assist really. it yeah and again then comes into question quality mm -hmm. of life and this was if this was a 
a one-off, right? Because, right. like, mutations are naturally occurring, right? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. just how nature mm-hmm. nature works. But some mutations are not meant to survive, right? right. And so, like, a spider mutation mm-hmm. in the wild likely would not survive because right. it wouldn't be able to right. find food and, like... Yeah eat and all that good stuff so but then if we're intentionally breeding breeding this right Mm -hmm. and then that's where the ethics come into question again totally yeah so this is interesting and we can kind of shift to like the next mutation yeah so you just said something that is basically like it has to be able to survive in the wild and that's kind of my bar for like whether or not it's scales aren't we yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) and this i saw that one coming oh yeah well as soon as you said that i was like that was a perfect little segue i got you i'm a take that and utilize it but so basically there are some some actually multiple species so this can go across several different species and we'll get into that but there are scaleless snakes Mm -hmm. and some of them are naturally occurring in the wild Mm -hmm. shockingly enough did you know i don't know I, i don't even know if we've talked about this diamondback rattlesnakes can be found and have been found surviving in the wild scaleless. I think this came up briefly in our shedding episode I think when we right. were talking yeah. about um, Taz with his shedding yes. and yes. the belly scales and everything. And yes. I think you had mentioned the, so the I, rattlesnakes. So I do have a scaleless snake. So I have a scaleless corn snake and they are naturally occurring in the wild. They, It's not obviously not super common. It's not found a lot, but adult species of or adult snakes have been found in the wild to survive. And it's like you just said, because the belly scales are there to protect mm-hmm. them the problem is when you have a fully scaleless ball python those belly scales are not there and it is like very very detrimental because they are so susceptible to like getting cut up getting scratched getting yeah. injured if you've ever felt a like yeah. a scaleless snake like their skin texture it's so weird is like so paper thin yes. like it's it's paper thin it's super soft it almost like it almost feels like human skin almost. It's yeah, very I would different. say even softer though yes. than than like, human like skin. Baby skin. It's weird. Yeah, it's like very, very, very soft and very yeah. like like just the potential for it to be injured it is feel, so it feels, easy. It feels fragile though, like yes. tissue paper, yeah, right? Literally, and yeah. their sheds feel like tissue paper mm-hmm. too. I mean, it's super bizarre. So there's the scaleless ball python that is definitely, definitely unethical, but scaleless corn snakes with their full ventral belly scales, like those are not that, they're they're not unethical at all. And same with also scaleless rat snakes are also completely okay because they have the belly scales and they're found naturally in the wilds as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting because sometimes there's, you know, it's like scaleless is unethical in certain situations, but not in others. Yeah. So it's interesting. But the only other one that I would say is not ethical is the scaleless bearded dragon, which is called a silk back or a silky. Yes. And that is probably, in my opinion, is one of the most problematic ones. Yeah. And just like with ball pythons, like bearded dragons are heavily, heavily bred. Mm -hmm. And so there's just a sheer quantity. And then there's the supply and demand. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, this is a novelty, Mm -hmm. whatever. And a lot of times people just don't know. Yeah. Or the breeder that they're talking to at the expo isn't going to give them because there are definitely health concerns and Mm -hmm. risks that the silk back is more prone to than yes. other ones that have their their scales mm-hmm. and if you just don't know then like you're yeah. then it just doesn't end well so specifically with the silk back because bearded dragons are a species that needs a pretty decent hot uvb outlet basking and as a hot well. basking mm-hmm. i have seen people who have silk backs have to like put lotion and like sun, not sunscreen but like they're really having to help the animal not burn under the heat that they need. Because they're not protected. Need. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so tough. And on top of that, because bearded dragons are dry shedders, which we talked about in, in our shedding episode, yeah. because they're dry shedders, like the, the skin is never completely dry because there's no scales on it. So they have so many issues with shedding. Yeah. It's just, uh, those are the ones that I would say like breaks my heart the most. Yeah. Because they're, they're just like, their health is at... Mm -hmm. at risk right completely and then it's like what do we as humans Mm -hmm. get out of this right like what is the benefit for breeding these right and it's just really hard to come up with a good reason besides just like supply and demand and you can charge like money for that so people are going to buy them but like is there looks cool like okay who cares (laughs) 
but it but to me that's not even a good enough reason no, because not. it comes at the cost of the animal's mm-hmm. well-being and that that to me is where the line is versus if you breed a mutation and mm-hmm. you know the only thing that we know of there's nothing saying that right. there aren't neurological issues with other morphs and stuff is but it's a cool color yeah i'm game for that totally. right like cool, i think that cool color cool pattern and no like defects or like deformities yeah. or Oh, I gotta have brown hair, right? Like I'm all for the I'm all for the cool color right. mutations, right? Yeah. But it has to come with taking into consideration yeah. the animal's well being. Yeah, hundred percent. I oh. couldn't agree more. Yeah, that was right there on the, at the <laughs> same on time. It. So the other ones that I found specific to ball pythons still is also apparently there are several ball python morphs that have eye defects, mm. and so what this is is it's called bug eyes. And so the eyes are a little bit bigger than normal. Why does that sound kind of cute? <laughs> I think it's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not, but and like I've, I love little buggy eyes and on I've, things. I've actually seen it. I think it's also pretty prevalent in, I might be saying this wrong, so somebody correct me if I am, but I think it's a the palmetto corn snake, hmm. which is like, it's a solid white corn snake with like little speckles on it. And okay. the speckles are like red and orange, I think. And so it's a gorgeous snake, yeah, but they have, with that but one. they have the little bug eyes, and I think they're so cute. That's what I'm saying. I know it's a mutation, <laughs> so, probably not good for like the eyesight well, of the animal, but I will say what I was reading. I didn't read anything that said that it was like super detrimental to the eyesight okay. or anything. So I, I think it's bring just, on the buggy eyes then. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. But so the super cinnamon, super black pastel, and eight ball. And then also super lesser, super butter, and butter lesser all have like I guess those bug those bug eyes, which okay. I thought was super interesting. Got it. So and then another deformity that we see quite often is spinal kinks. So that you can see in a mm. lot of different yeah, things. Yeah, I forgot about those. Yeah. Yeah. So spinal kinks is basically where, you know, there's just a little notch in the spine that isn't like didn't grow or develop. 100% correctly, but they have traced it back to some genes that I thought was interesting. And my understanding is if there's a spinal kink, depending on the severity of it, mm-hmm. the quality of life for the snake is still is Usually. still there, right? Yeah. And again, depending on the severity. Mm-hmm. But it goes back to like if we are realizing there's a pattern or connection between right. a morph and some sort of deformity, even mm-hmm. if it's a minor non-life-threatening right. deformity, again, goes back to the ethics of should we really be we, yeah. breeding this if we know that there's mm-hmm. this spinal kink because i know of plenty of snakes who have spinal kinks yeah, who yeah, live yeah. like high quality lives mm-hmm. but i don't think we should intentionally be going out of right. our way if to we like know that the breeding is what's causing yeah. it right exactly totally agreed so some of the ones that have spinal kinks are super cinnamon super black pastel eight ball and caramel al- albino okay i think so at least that's the the list that i was reading on the internet it's told me yeah <laughs> It's all off so, the internet. Super interesting. Now, the next kind of like species in this like little lineup that I wanted to talk about is leopard geckos. Geckos. Yeah, I knew we were going with this. Which I yeah. love. I love me some leopard geckos. You know I love that. Okay. Are we starting with lemon frost? We or... can totally start with lemon frost. Okay. Yeah. I know we've mentioned this on the podcast mm-hmm. before, but I also realize not everyone listens to every single episode. Right. So we'll catch you up on the lemon frost story real quick. So... <laughs> Like I was saying earlier in this episode, Mm -hmm. how there's been times where I'm like, that's really cool. And then you have to pull me off to the side. This was one of those times. This was one of those times (laughs) because I'm not a big leopard gecko. Like, I think they're adorable. Their little faces and smiley faces are just the cutest thing. You have always loved Charlie. Yeah. Always. I just have like never had a desire to own one. However, yellow is one of my favorite colors. And so we were at an expo and I saw what was a lemon frost, which had no idea what that meant. I just saw this like really, really, really yellow. And let me just say, if you don't know what a lemon frost leopard gecko is, just look it up because even though they are, they have issues that we will discuss here in a few seconds, they are gorgeous. So cool stunning i was like i don't even want a leopard gecko and i want this leopard gecko so i was like googling over this she was sitting there and i was just politely in the corner like (laughs) oh no (laughs) fully knowing in the next five minutes you're about to crush my dreams i know (laughs) but like it was such a cool it's crazy cool gecko. i mean i didn't blame you one bit because i was like it is hella cool like it is yeah. a gorgeous gorgeous gecko in hindsight i'm annoyed though because i was talking with the breeder and he's mm-hmm. just like chatting me up about this leopard gecko not once 
and this is the whole this is the whole crux of the problem. Not <laughs> once did he say anything about yeah. like, hey, just so you know, yes, yeah. these are the implications or like I would have been just like a clueless yeah. buyer if I had just bought that lemon frost yeah. and one would not have known that I was supporting an unethical breeding purchase, but also would not have been prepared right. for the potential mm-hmm. issues that would have come as a result of this yep. morph. So like that was just really disappointing in yeah. hindsight. So not only were my dreams crushed, but also like as a it's keeper in the hobby, I'm like, do better. Yeah, you know? it's frustrating. Like, Absolutely. Okay. So now that that was my story time, <laughs> so you pull me off to the yes. side and you're like, actually i was like hey i'm really sorry to crush your dreams but you're never i i know you and as soon as i tell you this you're never gonna have a lemon, lemon frost leopard gecko <laughs> short lived so the reason and what i told her is the lemon frost gene specifically is not only known but almost always it's like one of those morphs where it's like kind of a guarantee yeah. that they are going to develop a cancerous tumor and those those tumors can either be internal or external. Mm-hmm. So it's just, I mean, I have seen some with tumors like all the way out to their cheeks, like in their like ear area. Yeah. I've they're, seen they're really heartbreaking to see. It's really, really heartbreaking. And I did a little research on it too today. And they actually so not only does A it cause cancerous tumors, but they have there has actually been a study done on lemon frost specifically because I think it's one of the only reptile morphs that like literally causes tumors if there's another one let us know but it's one of the ones that one of the only ones that does this so there was a study done on it okay which is great but the study actually proved that the tumor like the cause of the tumor that gene is specifically linked to the phenotype and basically long story short what that means right well color but but what that means is that it cannot be bred out. It's like there's oh, no way of breeding. We're getting into the genetic genetics which, of it. Again, yeah. I know nothing about. So I'm just speaking of what I read online. Yeah. But it said basically that because like I guess some mutations are tied to the phenotype and some are not. I don't Because there's a phenotype and the genotype. Yeah. Right? Yeah. My biology is starting to kick I, in a little bit. I have <laughs> none of that. I was not a science girly. <laughs> so but but I guess, yeah, some of them can be linked to the phenotype. And I guess some are linked to the genotype, but because it's linked to the phenotype, for whatever reason, that means like you cannot breed the part of the DNA out of it that causes mm. the tumor. Because I guess some morphs have been able to be kind of bred to, yeah. to like, you can kind of breed some things out. That one cannot at all. Yeah, which then again is then the root of the problem of all this mm-hmm. because then you're going for this color which again is absolutely stunning, stunning. but yes. if there is an almost guarantee even a 0.1 mm-hmm. percent of some sort of issue happening in like cancerous tumors like hello it's that's not just like cancer buggy eyeballs like no, that is a that is- life-threatening thing and like of the leopard geckos <sighs> i've known with lemon frost who are end up typically rescues because they do need whoa <laughs> Sorry, I did not mean to hit my mic there, but yes. <laughs> the lemon frost who are typically rescues end up with a lot of veterinary care, yes. which most people aren't aware or aren't mm-hmm. wanting to do. Whatever your situation is, like yeah. end up rescuing, like, you know, giving them to a rescue. That's totally fine. I get that. But then their quality of life is diminished. And then their yeah. like duration of life, their mm-hmm. lifespan, there we go. Their lifespan is drastically, drastically, drastically less and so then it's like okay again why are we breeding this yeah like what's the real point you know big thanks to pangea reptile for the support of the podcast they're one of the leading companies for reptile supplies lizards and their world famous gecko food they just released their brand new micro feeding dishes made specifically for baby or micro geckos these smaller dishes can be mounted to smooth surfaces and even branches and will help stop your gecko from getting food all over their enclosure if you own a gecko you know exactly how nice it'll be to not have to clean food paw prints everywhere head on over to pangiareptile.com to check out these new micro dishes along with their other amazing products like their face packs for shipping chameleon kids and gecko food so that's probably I would say like in the top like two or three, but I would say lemon frosts are actually less popular than this other one. So I see these quite often. But Enigma, oh, had you heard of these? Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, because mm-hmm. I know. So for example, I, I immediately the friend that I think of in with this one is Jessica's animal yep, friend. She popped in my head so too. So she she rescues leopard geckos and has a sanctuary and other reptiles too. But she has 
quite a few leopard geckos that have enigma syndrome. And so that is honestly it, the way I kind of explain it that makes the most sense is it's almost identical to like the spider ball python morph. Mm-hmm. So it causes a neurological disorder where it's a little bit like the wobble where they will essentially like they can have seizures, they'll have balance issues, and they'll sometimes Ugh. death roll because Ugh. they'll get into like a spiral and kind of like – and so – it's very similar where they don't always know what's up and which direction it is. It is so heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. And like, I love Jessica's videos because she'll show like them eating and it's, it's heartbreaking because they obviously have the syndrome, but it's also like very sweet just seeing them, you know, trying and all of that. And she yeah. takes such good care of them. So it's, it's nice to see that, you know, they've wound up in a good rescue, but the enigma, I think before they found out that that it was a very popular leopard gecko morph, it was bred and so many people have them. Yeah. So that's, that's a pretty big one. And then the only other two for leopard geckos that I had written down were super snows and then some white and yellows. So super snows apparently have more of like facial deformities, which is weird. Hmm, so okay. I, didn't, I didn't know that that was, that was one I actually hadn't really heard of, but they will sometimes have like protruding jaws or like oddly shaped jaws or skulls that are like mm, not like the normal kind of yes formation interesting yes. okay which is super yeah i'd love that to like really look up pictures afterwards yeah I, i'll show you some but they also some of them might have like smaller nostrils or like larger ear holes so it's like very oh. it's very like bone structure yeah kind of like frankenstein yeah it's really yeah. really really interesting so i thought that one was just interesting because I didn't know that one. Yeah, me But neither. then there's also, and apparently this one's pretty minor, but there's like some white and yellows that might also experience a, um, uh, like a neurological disorder mm. issue. Yeah. So it's, there's a lot of them. Dang. Yeah. No. It just, hmm. It makes me super sad. Well, and it's like, we don't, like, things pop up and like, yeah. you don't know if it's tied to a gene or not, right? The first mm-hmm. time you see a mutation and like, There's a lot of clout that comes with finding a new mutation, especially if it's one that doesn't have any issues. Mm -hmm. But if it does have issues and you're noticing a pattern over these things, then it's like Mm -hmm. we have to do what's right for the animal, for the hobby. Like, yeah. It's tough. It's super tough. And, you know, I mean, a lot of these morphs are still bred. They are, you know, still. Yeah, I think they all all are. I'm pretty sure. Well, I will say lemon frost is pretty rare like that is one like i was, it was honestly, not that long ago we saw that one but it was only one and yeah and it, like i said it's just because it's rare it's like many a lot of people that one in particular i think have like taken that out mm. of their breeding projects like that that's one that i feel like and this is a whole nother can of worms so just like <laughs> open that one up yeah like the reptile hobby in the u.s is like heavily heavily under regulated like absolutely yeah hardly any regulations with the exception of like venomous, venomous. species mm-hmm. but like I think there should be a point where certain morphs that have this yeah. genetic, you know, connection or lineage or whatever, like, will we get to a point as a, a hobby where, like, it is no longer yeah. legal to yeah. breed to bring those? Them. Obviously, we can understand the ethics behind it. And, mm-hmm. like, hopefully you guys listening are like, oh, yeah, that doesn't sound good, you know? But yeah. then, like, people are still continuing to breed them, purchase them, whatever. Mm-hmm. And people purchasing them, like, I have to assume most of them have no idea. Yeah. yeah. So then it's like, well, how are you protecting that person, protecting the animal, mm-hmm. like, quality of life, whatever. And I think, like, if things were more regulated, yeah. then... But that, that like I said, is a whole nother can of worms. And, like, the hobby already <sighs> currently feels like we're being, like... Things over, are being like, taken away. Yeah, yeah. because of, like, states mm-hmm. and, like, what... Like, you know species are even legal and like so i'm like i'm not trying to like get into that i'm just simply saying that i battle with this in my head all the time not just with like ethical morphs but with like like large species and things Mm -hmm. like that there's so many so many so many things so well people ask me they're like oh what license do you need to keep reptiles right i'm like you you don't don't. yeah you just can just go to a petco and purchase a whatever and like go home with it i know yeah And, and the same the same could be said about like like dogs and stuff too. Oh, I don't think that everybody sure. should be able no, to just this go is, and like this get is a dog. Animal, like, animals yeah. across the board. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's super interesting, but that's a whole other can of worms that we will not yes. be getting into. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it just kind of gets you thinking of yeah. like, okay, here's the problem. What's the solution? Mm-hmm. It's like, you what know, what does that look like? Yeah. 
right now the solution is we're talking about it on our education (laughs) yeah just bringing awareness education in our ask as always if you see someone who's like maybe showing off their morph that's maybe one of these that we listed or just purchased it like just lead with kindness it can be so easy to be like shame on you or how could you have purchased that or did you know and just like come at them and you know what and you can say all day like if they if you know they tell you i didn't know you know and then you continue to go after them being like well you should have done your research it's like but what's done is done. They have yes. the animal. Let's set them up for success. Exactly. Let's them let's make them aware. Yes. What are some preventative, mm-hmm. you know, things that they can do yeah. or proactively, like mm-hmm. taking them to the vet on a regular basis yeah. or different considerations with how their enclosure is set up because s- of sometimes, this. Sometimes too, like depending on the situation, like that might be like you have to rehome it to a more experienced keeper. Yeah. And that happens sometimes too. But it's like we need to like help those people. I'm just and seeing not it just happening like, in my head right now where a TikTok video pops up and I someone's know. like, <gasps> I learned on the, this podcast that that's da, 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 And then just like, <laughs> no. And I'm no. like, let's not. Be kind. It let's happens to the that. best of us. You know, it. it's, you don't know what you don't know. So yeah. we're happy to help talk about it. And hopefully you guys will learn something from all this. So, yes. you know, that's the main goal. Cool. So are we ready to move on to our next segment? Let's do it. All right. We are doing another smash or pass, but we are doing 90s snacks. Yes. So excited for this. Specifically discontinued 90s snacks. Yeah. The ones that make you go, oh, yeah. I forgot about those. Yeah. Yeah. Those those are the the, best ones. Those are the ones we're going to work our way through. We love these. I feel so. like we need like a special jingle for when we do our segments, know. you know? We need something. Yeah. Something. We'll come up with something. Okay. So I'm going to go out of order here and just kind of like start picking some random well, ones. Let's do it. This was one that I saw this and I got really, really excited. The Cheetos Twisted Puffs. Yeah. They are incredible. I, it is a hard smash for smash me. Smash for me. That yeah. Is, like, and I'm still to this day a huge fan of the Cheetos Puffs over like regular Cheetos. But the twists. I just had regular Cheetos today <sighs> with my lunch. The twists are so good though. I miss those. Yeah. I really miss They're those. They're just, I don't know. I don't know how you eat Cheeto Puffs, but I'm definitely someone who takes like small bites of things. No, I do that too. And so with the, the twisty ones, I'm just you like. You could almost <laughs> take like three bites. It and was I'm like, just like going, I did that too. <laughs> going around though. Also, I feel like the Cheeto noise I just did was top notch. It was pretty spot on. I, I feel was like very that's, a, that's what a Cheeto that. sounds. A that's, puffy Cheeto. That's a really good little sound bite. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. the hard smash. That's yep. that's that's a. And the twist is different yes. than the regular. So much different. Puff. So much different. But you can't even try them because they're gone. I really wish they would bring those back. Those were. But uh, sometimes they will. Like they'll bring things back. Yeah. You know, for a little Randomly. bit. Yeah. We should like, do discontinued fast foods. Like, do you know what's one that's coming back that I actually just saw? Mm. The Altoid Sours. Oh. Those are coming back. Those mess up your mouth. I know, but they're so. Like good. the roof of your mouth, like Captain Crunch yes. and Altoid Sours, will like destroy know, my mouth. But I love those Altoid Sours. In like sours. the best way possible. But like, you're like it hurts so good. <laughs> you just <Literally>. keep. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep yeah. eating them. No, those were the best. But those are coming back. So I love I'm, that. I'm thrilled about that. But apparently they're changing the name. And I think it's going to be, I think they're calling it Retro Sours oh, or something. don't make me feel old. Okay. I know, right? That's how I felt too. But, okay, so the Fruit Loops cereal straws. Oh, oh, I oh. I remember those, those commercials, right? Mm-hmm. Like the kid, they're like different, like rainbow color, obviously because they're Fruit yeah, Loops yeah. and stuff. But they look like they're just having a blast yes. having breakfast. Yes. In reality, it's like 7 a.m. You're trying to get ready for school and you're like, yeah. I don't have time for this. I and you're just- <laughs> <laughs> but the commercial kids always look like they're they in always such look a like great they're mood. They're having the best time. Yeah. I, I, don't, I think I've had them like once before really? yeah so i don't have like a strong opinion of See, them i never used them as an actual straw i would just eat them after school that oh, was just like okay. my snack like i would just eat it yeah i don't have any memories of actually eating them okay. but the concept of it and everything i feel oh. like i would like it so the, i'm gonna well, smash they were, like, they were fruity and crunchy on the outside and then in the middle they had like a layer of i think it was supposed to be like cereal milk mm-hmm. but it was like it was almost like a I don't know if it was white chocolate or what it was, but it was like a layer of like cream. Yeah. And so the crunch was just. Mm, no, I saw it. So um, good. good Mythical Morning. Do you ever watch any of their no. videos? 
someone listening to this podcast knows what I'm talking about. But it's like these two guys and they try like a bunch of different things. So they're trying every single Fruit Loop snack. And um, one of them they did the Fruit Loop straws. Mm-hmm. So I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about because I had recently watched that. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever actually had oh them. Oh my gosh, I used to eat those. But all can the I time. just be like a participatory yeah, smash, even sure. though I haven't actually? Because <laughs> I know that you would love them if you tried them. You yeah, really would. I do love cereal. Okay, then this is a classic, but the Scooby Snacks. And they still have Scooby Snacks. Yeah, but they I are had. not the same. I do eat gummies on a regular, like they're always too. in my lunch. And I, I do, do have the Scooby gummies, mm-hmm. but they are not the same no. because the current ones are like, um, I want to say transparent. But like you translucent. Know? Like, or translucent. Like, like you yeah, can like see through. Them a little bit. Yeah, versus OG yes. Scooby Snacks were opaque. Yes. They were like solid yes. and specifically the Scooby. The Scooby. Which the were blue. like. blue. It was like a turquoise blue. You know how much food coloring is like in that. I literally <laughs> don't it that, care. It's I like the color eat. of a hornworm. Oh my God. It's to bring the, this back to it's, reptiles. It's exactly it's the color of a blue. hornworm. <laughs> it's literally that color. <laughs> it totally is. They right. were so good. And the Scooby were, was the like the best oh gummy yeah. of and all like, of them. If you And there were some times where you would like open up your pack and it they, there wasn't one in there. That was always so... I would always have to open a second pack because I'm not going to eat Scooby yeah, Snacks and unless get you the get blue the Scooby. One. Yeah, for yeah, sure. It was smash. the best one. Hard smash. Yep. I think these are just all smashes, honestly. <laughs> Why were they discontinued? I, I don't know. know. Okay, so this one is a drink. This one's really interesting and I will never forget these because these were probably filled with so many flavors dyes and chemicals <laughs> but the squeeze it's these mm, are the they that's like a pass the for me i'm also a pass but i will say the blue one i kind of used to like okay here's my thing the like functionality yeah. of these things was absolutely terrible, terrible. terrible. why do we have to come up with something other than a twist cap or like yes. a capri sun like ridiculous punch straw type ridiculous. of thing they are such a pain in the butt to try and like to like twist the top off in this like weird specific way it was this whole thing no and i don't recall them being resealable no they were not resealable what is the functionality of that I've drink that's, this whole drink and one time yeah no. and then it's just especially like, for kids for kids. Yeah. Kids are Don't running around, around like the like, red food diet. You're going to get that all over your clothes. But they were just like straight sugar. And oh, I, yeah. you know, have the biggest sweet tooth. But even that was like too much. Way too much. So way too much. I'm also a pass on that. In those. every sense of the word, that is a pass. That's a huge pass. Okay. So then the other one, this was a breakfast item. So these are the waffle sticks. The commercial for those yes, two went was hard. so good. Yes. Yeah. So good. Which like I'm thinking about now, I'm like, it's still a waffle. Like, it's not right. any different. At least with the cereal straw, that's yeah. like, it's different than just cereal. Yeah, yeah. A waffle stick is literally just a waffle it's, and a stick. But the commercial made it seem so stinking yeah. cool that you wanted it. And they, yeah. like, you could, like, dunk it in, yeah, like, you can dip the, the syrup and, like, yeah. you know. And now I'm getting flashbacks of 50 First Dates where they make the little waffle. Yes. Fill, and I'm like, those yes. waffle sticks would have come yes. in handy building mm-hmm. the little waffle houses mm-hmm. yeah no that one was that one was pretty solid yeah i'm gonna pass on the waffle sticks i also am going we're just on the same page today i'm loving this that's great no but yeah i'm also a pass on those just because i just they're fine i just like compared I, to these other ones i'm like me i've just never really liked frozen waffles to begin with so for me it's more of like a as okay. a whole i just don't really like the frozen waffle thing so you know, that's about it. But, okay, this one, and this is like heavy-duty sweet tooth, Dunkaroos. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to have those. They were so sweet. I don't think I've ever actually had them. That's crazy. They were, like, I- I'm lit- literally, like, remembering the taste in my mouth right now, and it was, like, probably the most sugar I think I've, like, ever... What were, th- what were you actually dunking? So you were dunking little cookies into icing with sprinkles like frosting oh. so it was like cookies dipped into frosting <laughs> so bad it was so much sugar overload my mom was also really big on like you know she like more healthy stuff so i didn't yeah. get these often these this was like this was like if i was at a friend's house kind of they thing. remind me of those like you know the little packets where it has like the um, the sticks, like the chocolate sticks and then you dipped yes. it in the icing it's very similar to okay that. so i had those very similar I Very just similar. like, I only really liked the icing part. It, but it was so sugary. 
It was so. Sorry, you're smashing or you're passing. I'm passing Dunkaroos, which I'm so sorry. But it was, even as a child, it was too much sugar. And I knew that as a child, which is crazy. Yeah, I'll I'll pass on those. So hard pass on that. Okay, so the next one is the Kid Cuisine Frozen meals the number of kids cuisines i had so many those are definitely a smash in kids cuisines are still around to this day but they are not the same no because kids cuisines when we were kids actually came with like a dessert a whole thing it was like Mm -hmm. either like a pudding or a brownie or Mm -hmm. like with sprinkles and it was like a whole thing and all all i remember is the pudding being like so hot (laughs) Like the pudding was like honestly though I appreciate the ingenuity out. of like how do you make a dessert that you can like microwave next to your right. mac and cheese in your right. like chicken nuggets yes yeah and, but but the the pudding was always like I was gonna burn the heck out of my mouth well you should not eat your pudding first then and then it wouldn't be so well <laughs> be, t- tell that little, to five year old me the, <laughs> and then you put the little sprinkles on there oh. Yeah, they just don't the make thing. them like they used to. Mm-hmm. Technically not discontinued, but the 90s kid cuisines are were, just... They yeah. were just different. They were yeah. different. smash. Agreed. Big time smash. I had so many of those on like Saturdays when my parents didn't want to cook. Like, Love so it. So good. Okay, so then we also have kudos bars. Okay, we need to explain what these are because I think by name, really? no one's going to... Well, I don't know. I mean, not that we can ask anybody, but like I... When I think of these, like the word kudos bar did not pop into my head. It really? wasn't until I saw the picture that I was like, <gasps> I know exactly what these oh, that's are. That's so funny. It's basically like a granola bar, but with like Rice Krispie kind of stuff. But better. And, yeah. Because yeah. I had like the chocolate drizzle. And so the they were M&Ms. like, there were multiple types yeah. of kudos bar. Yes. My favorite were always the mini M&M ones. Oh, yeah. The, no. The, the other ones, and it, it came in like a variety pack, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want these other ones. No, I want the, the M&M's, M&M one. The M&M's were always the best ones. Yeah. So yeah. I smashed the M&M one Those and I passed the best. The other ones. Yeah. No, I'm a big, big smash on the M&M's ones. But the other ones were just very plain, very granola bar-esque. You can't have M&M's on one no. and then this other one And just expect be people naked. to want the other one. Yeah. It was no. crazy. No. So, okay. Then we also have Trix yogurt. <gasps> the best. The best. That just like unlocked. Right. A whole new memory. Also, right? the bunny from Tricks was I like know. a little crazy now. <laughs> I know. And, but I loved those commercials too. Okay. But like, can we take a moment for the, like the 90s kids mm-hmm. commercials? Because like the ads that play now are just not. Lame. Not the so same. So lame. We had no. like unhinged TV commercials yeah. in the 90s. It was fabulous. Dang. Yeah. So I'm going to definitely smash Trix same. yogurt. Same. Especially in particular, the blue and red one. That was the best one. Blue yeah. and pink or red. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Was. Yeah, I was also mm-hmm. a fan of like the pink and yellow. Me too. That was yeah. a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those were also very sweet, but I feel like it wasn't like... It wasn't overly. Horrible. No, they, they also, did a good Go-Gurts. job Also, Go-Gurts. Oh, I loved Go-Gurts. Frozen <gasps> Go-Gurts. If you froze them, yeah. they were like a little nice frozen summer treat. Did a lot of Go-Gurts oh, growing up. Big Go-Gurt girl. Yeah, love those. Big Go-Gurt girl. Get yes. that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Okay, so let me see. So, okay, this one, this is what I would always find in both of my grandma's purses all the time. These are the oh, cream candy. savers. <gasps> you remember those? It was like the strawberries yes. and cream. And yes, they looked like and they had peppermint. raspberry. Yes. Raspberry, strawberry. I think there was mm-hmm. orange. There was an orange one. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about the orange one. Mm-hmm. It's candy. I'm all over that. I know, I know. Yeah. No, those were my favorites. Yeah. I used to go digging in my Nana's purse for those. My grandma always had Tic Tacs. Yeah. Like, always, always has Tic Tacs. But the she, I don't think she ever had the cream savers, mm-hmm. but my mom was a big fan of those. So yeah. we definitely had a lot of those mm-hmm. um, growing up. But yeah. I think my favorite were always the strawberry ones. Yes, me too. Those were like, you can't beat those. They were just too good. <sighs> I miss those. I know. Those are my favorite. Okay, so this last one was interesting. This one was actually one that you knew and I did not. Oh, you so didn't know these? I didn't know these. So okay. this was the Philadelphia, which Philadelphia is like the cream cheese company, right? The cream cheese brand. So it was Philadelphia snack bars and they were strawberry cheesecake bars. These were so good. So they had to be refrigerated, if memory serves. I'm sure. Because of the cheesecake. Yeah. But it's basically a little rectangle, like the size of a Twinkie. And it had a little crust with literal cheesecake. And then it had like an icing drizzle. But then it, this little divot in the top that had like 
strawberry. I think there was raspberry flavored, I... like kind of like jelly in there i'm so upset that i missed these they were so good i was not counting calories as a child but those had to be at least like 500 calories each like sure but they were so stinking good and again i had to look up a photo and they looked incredible yeah i'm very sad you didn't get to experience one because they were so good about it now yeah again my mom was like a big sweets fan and she's has a soft spot for cheesecake i do too and so those Mm -hmm. were like those were all over but you they looked so good (sighs) delicious so i'm gonna smash those even though i've never tried them yes (laughs) but i took one look at a photo and i know i would have loved what is there not to love i mean obviously unless you don't like cheesecake which is a requirement for for this treat yeah but they were mm. they looked so good they looked incredible so i'm sold i'm really upset that i'll never have one (laughs) ah the nostalgia no i'm such a nostalgic girly i love looking back on memories and thinking about that stuff so yeah this is so funny because we've had some segments where we've done like um 90s like pbs shows yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. like this and so whatever else we, so. we like the nostalgia if you can't tell yeah <laughs> they're, they're just fun i know well i think that is it for today's episode did you have anything else mm, i don't think so no that's yeah, on my end yeah all right well i feel like we covered a lot i mean oh you know, yeah this so. the the can of worms is open yeah. do with it what you will let us know what you think about all the morphs that we mentioned if we missed any if there are you know any new ones that we haven't heard about or anything but this is else. A, an open discussion uh-huh. right and like there's so many nuances yeah. with with everything especially with breeding especially with mm-hmm. morphs especially with like reptile keeping as much as we know as a yeah. hobby there's still so much we don't know mm-hmm. and we'll continue to learn i just think we have to keep in mind the animal's well-being in yes. all of our decisions both in our care and our purchases mm-hmm. and our breeding like that should be at the forefront of all yeah. of this and so that's our attention is just to bring this to light so then we yeah. can make good choices yeah but we hope it helped and give us a follow on all the things subscribe subscribe drop us a comment leave us a voice memo if you leave want us a to. review yes all the all things, the things. Yep. you can follow me over at lissus lizards you can follow me on neptune the chameleon and we'll talk to you later girlies bye